Greetings, the following chalk talk will cover pancreatic cystic neoplasms. It's certainly not meant to be comprehensive, but we'll go through some of the more common lesions, about uh, four or five of them, and talk a little bit about each one. I'll start off by talking about serous cyst adenomas. And it's important to remember that these really can occur anywhere in the pancreas, and they have no communication with the pancreatic duct. There is somewhat of a tendency to, for them to occur at the head of the pancreas, but they can occur anywhere. Patient demographics, uh, females above the age of 60 are the patients who most often get these lesions, and there really is no malignant potential. Now, there are a few case reports here and there of uh, malignancy developing, but for practical purposes, it's important to remember that this is a benign lesion. On imaging, it has a variety of appearances, most commonly it's the microcystic or honeycomb appearance, where it's composed of multiple small cysts clustered together, um, typically more than six cysts, each of which are less than two. It has lobulated borders, as you can see on this drawing schematic. And on occasion, you're going to see calcifications associated with serous cyst adenomas. And when these are present, they'll be in the central portion of this mass. Less commonly, you're going to see the macrocystic or oligocystic variant, where you have uh, multiple larger cysts that compose this lesion. That's going to be difficult to differentiate from a mucin cyst adenoma prospectively. And least common, you have the solid variant composed of really septations with minimal fluid, and that's going to be hard to differentiate from a neuroendocrine tumor. You're going to have to endoscopic ultrasound this to establish the diagnosis, but because it's benign, no treatment is really needed unless the patient has symptoms. The next entity I'll cover is a mucinous cystadenomus. These uh, also are seen most commonly in females. Um, the age range a little bit younger than serous cystadenomus, typically 40 to 60 years old. These tend to occur in the body and tail of the pancreas, and they have malignant potential associated with them. So if you were to diagnose this, you really need to watch this carefully or potentially resect it. Imaging-wise, looks a little bit different from the classic appearance of serous cystadenoma. These typically are well-encapsulated masses composed of multiple larger cysts with septations in between them. Calcifications may be also seen with mucous cyst adenomas, but if they're present, they're really along the periphery of the mass or along the septation. Now, rarely you're going to see uh, lesions like this, but in addition to these uh, septations and calcifications, you may see these discrete soft tissue nodules. And when that's present, you've got to bring up the possibility of mucinous cystadenocarcinoma. So those are malignant lesions that can be seen uh, in this setting. So if you see these soft tissue nodules in these large cystic masses, you got to be worried about a mucous cystadenocarcinoma, and these have to undergo resection. The next lesion is probably the most commonly seen lesion, which is the introductal papillary mucinous neoplasm, IPMN. We see these all the time, and they really come in some varieties, side branch, main duct, and mixed. And the side branch uh, typically uh, manifests as single cyst or multi-septated masses that represent really the cystic dilatation of the side branches of the pancreatic duct, as you can see over here. Main duct's a little bit different in that uh, the main duct itself becomes dilated, tortuous, as you can see over here. And on occasion, you may see some soft tissue nodules associated with these. Main ducts are uh, more likely to be malignant, and so you really have to consider resection in those instances if possible. And mixed variety have features of both, and they're really treated as main duct lesions. Also going to talk a little bit about spend tumors, solid and papillary epithelial neoplasms. These are neoplasms that are seen more often in females, typically less than age 40 years old, so a little younger than mucinous cystadenomas. can occur anywhere as well, but have a predilection for the body and tail of the pancreas. Um, and like mucinous cystadenomas, these also have a malignant potential, but that malignant potential tends to be low, and it tends to be present when there are large lesions, typically when they're about 5 centimeters or more in size. This is a tough one to call prospectively, but you're going to see a well-encapsulated mass. And one of the key features that's been reported is the presence of blood products or hemorrhage within these lesions. So when you see you know, uh, a well-encapsulated mass with some hemorrhage, other components are uh, cystic within it, there may be some solid components as well. Within the remainder of this lesion, uh, those solid components will have a very low level enhancement. They're not going to be avidly enhanced. When you see a mass like this, in the right patient demographics, you've got to consider spin. You're going to do an endoscopic ultrasound to, uh, to establish that diagnosis. And if it is established, you need to resect it and follow these patients up. Finally, I'll talk about cystic neuroendocrine tumors. This is uh, quite uncommon, but has a reasonably specific appearance. Typically, these are non-functioning tumors. And on imaging, they can occur anywhere. But what you're really looking for is a cystic mass with a thick rind of enhancement associated with it. 
So when I see a cystic mass, uh, it's usually small in size, two, uh, two centimeters or so, with a thick enhancing rim internally it's cystic. I'm going to bring up the possibility of cystic neuroendocrine tumor. These need to be uh, sampled and then resected. Thank you for your attention.